All right, scientists, welcome to Over the Top Science. Uh, today, we're going to talk about matter. What is matter? Have you learned anything about matter before? Any thoughts? Let's discuss. Okay, go ahead and open your science journal and start a new page called What is Matter? Uh, put the title up top, capitalize all the important words, and underline it. Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to define the word matter. So write the word matter and underline it. And matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. And notice the word mass is in here, so I'm going to go ahead and underline that and bold it. Mass is an important word, so I'm going to go ahead and write the definition of mass. And of course, we should underline that here too for consistency. Notice I skipped a line after the word matter. And mass is the amount of matter in an object. So I'm going to underline the word matter, bold and underline. So the word matter is inside the definition of mass. So we need to be a little bit clearer on what that means. So mass is related to another physical property of uh, we know is weight. And weight is the pull of gravity on an object. Now, we're not going to write that definition because you already know what weight is. You might not know the science definition of weight, but you know what weight is. You've gone to the doctor's office and they have you step on the scale and maybe they said uh, you weigh 80 pounds. So your weight is 80 pounds. Well, your mass is also 80 pounds. So we're going to write weight and mass are very similar. All right. Yeah. And I'm going to give it, we're going to write some examples. So I'm going to give you another example. I go bowling and I use a 10 pound bowling ball. So the mass of my bowling ball is 10 pounds and the weight is also 10 pounds. So the number for mass and weight on earth are always the same. The definitions are slightly different, but the numbers are the same. All right, so this is what your notes should look like so far. You should have a title. Uh, you can put it on the left or you can put it in the center. Uh, you should have the definition matter, anything that has mass and takes up space, the definition for mass. You should have indicated that mass is very similar to weight. And then put some examples. I put the example that I used about the bowling ball. I said the bowling ball weighs 10 pounds and it has a mass of 10 pounds. Now, what I really like to do with uh, journals is I like to draw pictures. So I inserted a picture, but I encourage you to draw a picture. Maybe you want to draw a picture of a bowling ball on a scale. If you have a different example, draw a picture of the example that you have. Okay, so let's go ahead and review that definition of matter again. In order for something to be made of matter, it must have mass, so it must weigh something, and it must take up space. So both of those things have to be true for it to be made out of matter. So we're going to have a little activity here. Uh, we're going to have some objects, some substances, some organisms, and you're going to decide whether the thing is made of a lot of matter, a medium amount of matter, a small amount of matter, or no matter. So you want to say, does it both weigh something and does it take up space? And if so, how much? Let's look at the first object. We actually have an organism here. We have an elephant. So Write the word elephant in your journal, and next to it, does it have a lot of matter, a medium amount of matter, a small amount of matter, or no matter? And put some justification of why you say what you said. And we're going to review it in just a moment. Okay, so what did you think about the elephant? Did you think it had a lot of matter, a medium amount of matter, small matter, no matter? Well, before we answer that question, let's talk a little bit about Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein had something called the theory of relativity. And the answer to the question, according to him, it depends what you're comparing it to. Let me give you an example. Is 15 seconds a long time? You'd probably say no. If I said, hey, uh, you could have 15 seconds of recess, recess, you'd say, no, Mr. Crouch, that's crazy. But say you put your hand on a hot burner. Would 15 seconds be a long time? Then yes, 15 seconds would be a very long time to have your hand on a hot burner. So going back to our elephant. Uh, I'm guessing most of you said the elephant was made up of a lot of matter, and that's probably because you were comparing it to yourself. If you compare an elephant to yourself, it's a lot bigger than you, it takes up a lot more space, and it's a lot heavier than you are. But let's say that you compared an elephant to Earth. Then you would say an elephant is made up of very little matter. 
So the answer to the question, it depends on what you compared it to and how you justified your response. So let's go to a donut now. Would you say a donut has a lot, a little, medium, small amount of matter? Discuss it. Again, it depends what you're comparing it to. If you compare a donut to an elephant, that has a very little bit of amount of matter. But if you compare a donut to a grain of sand, then it has a lot of matter or a medium amount of matter. So as long as you justify your response and you said it was made of at least some matter, then you were correct. How about air? Does air have weight? Does air weigh anything? Does it take up space? Uh, think about it, discuss it, and we'll go through it in just a moment. Okay, so what did you say? Is air made up of matter? If so, how much? All right, let's, first of all, is it made of matter? Does it take up space? There's air right here. Is it taking up space? Well, let's look at it this way. There's air in this balloon. Is it taking up space? Yes, it is. So air is definitely taking up space. Does it have mass? Yes, it has mass. I will tell you that this balloon here has more mass than this balloon here. This balloon here is both air and latex or rubber, and this one here has very little air, but it does have latex. So this balloon here has more mass. So it doesn't, depending on how you looked at it, it doesn't matter how much matter you said it was made of, but it's definitely made of matter. Okay, the last organism I want to talk about is a paramecium. A paramecium is a one-celled microscopic organism. Now, one cell, let me put that in perspective for you. A human being has 33 trillion cells, and a paramecium has one cell. So a paramecium is so small, the one cell the organism is so small that you can't see it with the naked eye. You need to use a microscope. Now, can you find one? Yes, you can. Would the, way, the place you find a paramecium would be in a pond, in a stream, in a canal, in a lake, and you want to get water that's filled with algae and get it really get in there. So what I'm going to do here is I, I went to my local canal here and I got some water. This water looks great, it has a lot of algae in it and whatnot. So I'm going to take my pipette here and I'm going to fill it up and I'm going to put it onto the microscope. See, the microscope allows me to see things that are too small to be seen with the naked eye. So I'm going to put this on here and I got a really good feeling about this. So I'm going to look on here and I'm going to see if I see a paramecium. Let's look. Oh, yeah, there's a paramecium. There's, oh, there's one. Here's another one. Here's some algae here. So here's a paramecium. Here's, maybe that might be one. Here's another one. Wow, we really did well with this water. So, yeah, we definitely found some paramecium's, these one-celled organisms. Now, what we're using here is we're using a 400 magnifying microscope. So you're able to see uh, diff you're able to see them pretty large. Uh, you could see them as uh, with as little as magnification as 100, uh, but of course it'd be one fourth the size. But that gives you an idea of what a paramecium looks like. And I encourage you if you have access to a microscope to go ahead, go out there and get some water with some algae in there, whether it be from a pond, a canal, a lake, and see if you can find yourself a paramecium or any other one celled organism. All right, so back to our paramecium. Does a paramecium have a lot of matter, a medium amount of matter, a small amount of matter, or no matter? Well, if you said it had some amount of matter, then you're absolutely correct. Yes, a paramecium is very small, and you cannot see it with the naked eye, and you do need a microscope. But it does take up a small amount of space, and it does have a very, very, very small amount of mass. So yes, a paramecium... Um, is made up of some amount of matter, probably you would say a small amount of matter. So everything we talked about today is, was made up of matter. So no matter what you, you name, if it's a substance, if it's an organism, um, if it's a material, everything is made out of matter. And that's really the main point of today's lesson. Everything takes up space and everything has some mass. Okay, so it's time for our journal response. Uh, the first question, simple, what did you learn about matter? Be specific. Use detail. Question two. Jimmy says that a Tyrannosaurus rex is made up of a lot of matter. And Renee says it's actually made up of very little matter. The teacher claimed they were both right. What is the reason that the teacher claims both students are correct? So use detail in response. Support your answer. 
and take your time. Okay, you can email questions or comments to overthetopscience at gmail.com. Uh, please be sure and go ahead and click the like button below and please follow. Uh, if you do have a great question, I'll be sure to put your question on the next video that I have. Thanks and happy science, everyone.